Home to picturesque coastal scenery, awe-inspiring architecture, a burgeoning waterfront downtown, and welcoming hospitality, Newport is considered internationally by many to be a sparkling gem in the coastal crown of New England. For those who love architecture, design, and history, Newport has beaches, opulent mansions, beautiful museums, and walking tours that reveal the colonial and Gilded Age charm that no other community in America can offer. On November 4th, Newport residents will be faced with the most important decision in the town's history. They will vote to embrace the Newport brand that this city has worked so hard to establish over the last 200 years. Or they will accept a proposal that will change Newport's heritage forever. We Newporters must face the fact that on November 4th, we stand at a fork in the road to our community's future. As you know, there's, there's opposition in Newport, there has been for years, to expanded gambling, to any gambling. Some, some folks don't even want the current Newport Grand Open. The woman, quoted in the journal, retired teacher who lives there, said, quote, I think it's a morally reprehensible way to raise money for government. She says she's voting no on this she, idea. By the way, she's probably right. In fact, the partner for the casino in Newport is the state legislature. They receive 60% of the video slot revenues that come from Newport Grand currently. And they've become the sales team for the casino industry in the state. We continue to hurt ourselves over and over again at the voting booth. We have to stop this insanity. We have to stop this corruption. And we have to stop this casino. There's wonderful redevelopment opportunities right now in Providence. The I-95 land from the redevelopment in the area, two years it sits. No outside developer wants to come and do business with this state. The corruption is detrimental to jobs, jobs, jobs. Nobody knows who they need to cozy up to or how many palms they'll need to grease. Newport is just too risky and to bring a casino to Newport is just bringing more corruption and more risk, and we don't need it. When I read in the papers uh, that Joe Paolino was um, beginning a fundraiser for Buddy Cianci, I was shocked. Um, you know, Buddy's a twice convicted felon. Everyone knows how um, his history in Rhode Island, uh, it's a sad history. Uh, it's a corrupt history. And for Mr. Paolino to make the decision to uh, start a fundraising and, and ultimately with an enormous amount of money and, uh, and a lot of political connections, uh, here's Buddy Cianci leading the polls right now as mayor for Providence. And it's just, to me, an absolute embarrassment in the state of Rhode Island. Um, so the same man who's behind Buddy is the same man trying to come down to Newport and sell us on, on this casino, and it's the same thing. With enough money and enough political savvy, um, they hope to push something that is ultimately wrong, wrong for the community. And, um, you know, that may fly up in Providence, but I think uh, not down here. You know, when you cross over the bridges to Newport, uh, Newporters, um, they have a different set of values. Uh, I think both in the residential community and in the business community. Um, and I think they're going to lose. I think they're going to lose significantly. Um, I'd like to see this be a landslide victory. So quite frankly, we don't have to go through this again. I don't think, um, I don't think the people in Newport should have to be forced to put time and money and effort into uh, fighting these kind of influences. They're, they're ultimately corrupt and they're wrong for our island. Atlantic City became bankrupt if not officially, then practically speaking. It had almost nothing going for it in terms of economic activity. And it was um, what I think the casino industry seizes upon, which is desperate. In the 1950s and 60s, Newport's local economy was booming as it grew to be the second largest naval port in the United States. In the 1970s, however, we suffered quite an economic downturn when the naval fleet was relocated to Virginia. 
Newport scrambled to find revenue sources at that time as the Navy families departed along with the fleet. That was when the high lie interest came knocking. They came in promising wonderful revenues to the city, promising for a few months of the year it would be a high life fronton, and the rest of the year it would be a wonderful entertainment and cultural civic center. Unfortunately, the civic center never evolved. This casino is now open. I was supportive of a casino uh, gambling in Atlantic City because I felt it could provide a catalyst to revitalize this once great resort area in the state of New Jersey. If I knew you know, then what I know now, clearly I would not have supported it. When I, when I look back at what happened or more accurately did not happen, the promises never came to fruition. The casinos are masters at sucking the people in and keeping them there and then sending them home. I think this, this point in the game, they're just telling us whatever we want to hear to get it in there. If they genuinely had a concern for the community or wanted to impair, improve it or bring some kind of change, they'd do it in a positive way. A civic center, something more family oriented because that's what Newport's about. Essentially, the casino is a parasitic operation. They want to take from us. They want to take our beauty, our history. They want to take the business from a small operator here and transform it into something else, something that's going to be out of our control. I'm very worried that we as a community will be giving up control of significant economic uh, interests to mysterious money, and more importantly, and more frighteningly for me, to politicians upstate who are giving us a lot of promises that I have no faith in. I'm very worried about the close relationship between the developers of this project and political interests. Political interests that do not seem to have the interests of Newport or Quidnick Island in mind at all. You know, this is not just uh, an enhanced high lie. This is not high lie in fancy dress. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. You don't know what you're going to get. There are promises being made, promises about jobs, promises about shared income with the city that I would take with the largest grain of salt possible. I think for me the most eye-opening moment in time, and we talked about this, the eye-opening moment in time was receiving the flyer at my door. It came early in the discussion process. I knew the host agreement discussions were going on. And I true, when I read it, I was sort of surprised at what was being called out, especially the guarantees, Newport $9 million over the next six years, when I know, in fact, it's not guaranteed. You know, it was not guaranteed at the state level, and it's, it was not being guaranteed in the host agreement. And I, I saw it as deception, and I think it was, that was very, a very troubling moment to see that. Um, and it's one thing to have voters be presented with some clear choices and um, honesty, but um, I found that very disturbing, that um, promise of this money that in reality was not promised. And, yeah. The problem with the casino industry from a, a legislature's point of view, is that everywhere they go, they green the legislature. Uh, and, and the reason why they're different than other industries that lobby a uh, local commission or, or a state legislature is that the amount of money they're gonna gain is so fantastical that corrupting a state legislature is simply a cost of doing business. Can Newporters really trust these developers, these investors in the casino and Newport Grand? They're political insiders. And at two o'clock in the morning in the final hours of the General Assembly's session this past year, Joe Paolino was in the State House privately conferring with Senate President Teresa Piva Weed to marshal through the casino referendum. The last moment language was slid into the bill that stripped the question off Newport's local ballot. Local Newport residents were irate. It's this kind of back room dealing and manipulation of the voters' intent that is what we should be most concerned about. 
More than $8 million so far this year has been given to the owners of Twin Rivers and Newport Grand. And yet $7.3 million given to Twin Rivers, they turned around and they bought a casino in Mississippi. We cannot trust the General Assembly and how they're allocating our hard-earned dollars. We cannot trust these developers to not manipulate and have their influence felt while we in Newport sit and are told that this is in our best interest. It doesn't create any new net jobs in this city. It will simply pillage from the existing businesses and the locals who have worked so hard to build our brand and our image in this town. A casino is not what we want. Partners in this state need to be those we can trust and rely on. The General Assembly is a 60% partner in the casino revenues. That's the reason we can't trust them either. The deal is not with Newport. The deal is with the General Assembly. Newport's money is not guaranteed. A councilwoman even removed her support after seeing the lies being printed on the brochures being distributed for jobs, jobs, jobs. It is not creating jobs in Newport. It is not creating a healthy economy. And we need to vote no and stop the insanity. Now, I don't know what happened in the State House that morning. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. But I do know what the Constitution says. And we, in the city of Newport, are entitled to have a local ballot and have the referendum question on that ballot, and we're not going to get it. This is worrisome. Here we have a violation of the Constitution. Nobody seems to be doing much about it at the moment. I hope they will in the future. And I wonder, is casino gambling behind this? Casino gambling involves huge sums of money, more than you and I can imagine. Is this just an indication of the type of problem we're going to run into if we approve casino gambling? I'm not willing to take that risk. And I hope you aren't willing to take that risk. What you see with casino gambling is there's a lot comes with the package. In any place that you go that uh, this has been a premier feature to be a gambling destination, you'll find plenty of glitz and glamour, but you go just two blocks off of that glitz and glamour and you start seeing the heartache. Nearly 30 years after Atlantic City approved its first casino, the city remains economically and fiscally exhausted. 200 restaurants have gone out of business. It has no grocery store, no movie theater. A greater percentage of residents live below the poverty line than in 1970, while the median household income is 60% lower than the state average. Violent crime, on the other hand, is more than 500% higher. In the last 40 years, nearly a third of its population has fled. Although billions have rushed into the casino's coffers, buying bailouts and unprecedented influence, Monopoly City is on life support. Kept on basic rations by the town's only major industry left standing, gambling. In Atlantic City, the gambling industry has seen its own revenues fall for seven straight years. In the last year alone, its profit has tumbled a catastrophic 54%. With its competition wiped out, the gambling industry has begun to devour itself. The casino industry as a whole is performing subpar. And according to Moody's, an investment rating service, the premier investment rating service, the casino industry has been downgraded from neutral to negative the entire industry. This is pretty significant. <clears throat> so when the casino developers are telling us that they're going to come in, they're going to create 200 jobs, they're going to create all this stimulus, they're going to give the city of Newport one and a half million dollars a year for the next three years, another million thereafter. These are promises. It may as just well be 2,000 jobs, 20,000 jobs, 15 million dollars, because these are arbitrary numbers. If the industry as a whole is performing poorly, how can this new project expect to see the success that the promoters, that the developers are telling us that we should expect? It's just not going to happen. The casino industry is saturated all over the Northeast. 
And right now, they're cannibalizing from each other's businesses, and they're cannibalizing businesses from within each community. So this is not a good deal for Newport. These guys are experienced developers. They know how they're going to get out of this. They have an exit strategy. We don't. And if we have to bail them out, where is that going to leave us? It bothers me, and it should bother you, too. It's an industry that makes its living off of convincing people to make bets. You've got a very good chance of making a lot of money here. Of course, you have a greater chance of losing a huge amount of money and a bunch of other things that are important to you as well. At a casino, you have to increase a person's losses. You have to increase a segment's losses. You have to increase a community's losses. That's how you succeed. That's how you make a name for yourself. That's how you get a bonus, is by the amount of losses you accumulate from your community, from your surrounding communities, from a certain segment. The other thing I've noticed too, having worked on the council now for a number of years, is every year we see less and less revenue coming in from the gambling industry. Our budget, slowly but surely, each year has weaned itself off of reliance on that. So, again, time has gone by, I can now see a budget that does not rely on any gambling revenue, and we would be fine. The city of Newport has done a good job of learning how to move forward without that reliance. So if we did approve it and you know and we did sort of take a new bump of revenue, I look at it now as we would just sort of renew that addiction. We would slowly but surely setting up for the next generation this process of needing to move away or you know or weaning ourselves off of the gambling revenue because I don't I, I don't really see the facility as being you know this money-making effort for you know the long tall, long haul I think it'll do the same thing it'll make some money you know we'll, we'll get used to it it'll sequence down you know so so since we're so close to being weaned off of that money this does in my mind seem like it could be a good moment in time where we sort of say it, we're ready to move on. And I, and I think budget-wise, we can do that as a city. Paul Carroll is the Director of Civic Investment for the City of Newport. Paul has 25 years experience in economic and business development in the U.S. and abroad. During his tenure with the city, he has been focusing on the opportunity for economic diversification. Two of his major initiatives are the Sheffield Tech Work Accelerator at the former Sheffield School on Broadway and the larger Newport Innovation Hub. I take this opportunity to actually show you physically where this innovation mixed development um, hub will be located. As you can see right here, here is the bridge coming in, the Pell Bridge, and the highway to nowhere. This is the larger north end. The Darker purple areas are the public lands that the city um, will work with um, strategic partners to bring in for the physical development. This is the bridge, the highway to nowhere, with the realignment will free up that land. Currently we're in negotiations with the Navy, with the Navy for potential purchase of the naval properties as well as the city yard. The larger pink area is the impact area. Currently that whole area here is zoned uh, commercial industrial. Our goal now is to working with our develop, uh, contractors to look at a flex flexible overlay to transform this into a commercial technology zone. What's really a challenge and also a great opportunity for us is how this will interact with the, very, the various neighbors around. We want to make sure that these very strong neighborhoods in the south and the green, the stabilized neighborhoods, are um, not adversely affected. We need to make sure that what's going on in the base, uh, what we do here, complements and doesn't cut off the base. And then finally, we really need to look at this area where we refer to as the opportunity area. Uh, this has the potential with all the incredible work Newport's done to bring this uh, section up as it is now to really look at how this can augment it for our housing as well as potential property values and most importantly, job creation. The Innovation Hub itself is really an idea that came out of the 10 years work of looking at the diversification that's in Newport's comprehensive uh, land use plan, the diversification of uh, economic opportunities. We've 
The work on the Innovation Hub itself is about a year and a half in the making, and we've been very fortunate to have incredible strategic partners, those being the Rhode Island Department of Transportation, uh, Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority, statewide planning, um, as well as the Chamber of Commerce. And we've been fortunate through statewide planning to actually have a challenge grant and a second grant funded by um, the Defense Fund that's a pass-through that comes from the state legislature and is a pass-through to the Chamber of Commerce. And that's been able to fund our program in moving forward. Now for where we are here is we've created the We've created our strategic uh, vision document. We're in the process right now of going out to a select group of developers to ask them to test that and ask them to say what would they do, if, what, what do we have right, what do we have wrong with the SWOT analysis. And then from there we'll bring those uh, suggestions back, take a look, strengthen the vision document and then go out. Uh, the target right now is the first quarter of the calendar of 2015 to uh, go out to an open re request for proposals for national development groups. Our grant application is looking at five years for 3,000 jobs. And this is from everything from people that have no skills, starting at the age of you know, the 20 to 30 year olds, um, having no skills that can actually be trained and placed. And it's very important, it's the placement um, of these positions. And the green infrastructure allows people actually career paths, uh, well-benefited career paths from the very beginning. So it's similar to um, back in the 40s and the 50s when manufacturing, when people could go into a factory. Some people stayed right at the machine and they stayed their whole life and made a very good benefited life. Other people in the factories went into management, went into sciences and continued their education. We see green infrastructure as a great opportunity for the diversification, particularly for young people who may feel they're being left behind in the economy. So we really are looking at the Innovation Hub to be providing from very high level scientific engineering and design, finance, all the way through the area of people that are on the land showing of what we can do to make sure that this is a group in a community that's resilient and um, is really looking at the future and, and really is encouraged by the future. Um, the people that we're doing this for, and I'd like to dedicate this effort, are the first graders on Aquidneck Island, this year's first graders. 25 years from now, when uh, Newport celebrates its 400th anniversary, the beginning of a fifth century of existence, these young people will actually be the young families. Many of them will have their young children. And I have two wishes for all of this effort. The, wish, the first wish is that as they're in their early 30s, they have the ability to choose to remain in Newport if they so choose, um, if they want, uh, due to the fact of the quality of life and the quality of, op of opportunity. On November 4th, Newport voters have a choice between two competing visions for our city's economic future. One option proposes casino jobs. The other vision, developed by Newport's Office of Economic Development, proposes a future that would provide thousands of jobs to residents in the Innovation Hub campus. That is Newport's future. The choice we make on November 4th will determine Newport's destiny. I received a call from a lady. Somehow she got my extension. And I picked up, I'm like, hey, this is JT Mathis, you know, what can I do for you? I didn't know if it was someone that worked at the casino or if it was someone, he said, will you stop, just stop, st stop sending me these mail pieces. My husband's dead, he's, he's, he's gone, you guys destroyed him. Just leave me alone, you guys keep on sending this. It's, it's already hard enough. It's already hard enough, just leave, just stop. You know? That mail piece, I sent that database to the printers. That person put me as a face. That's that continuous cycle, is developing players, watching them lose their money. And then you hear about the divorce, you hear about the suicide. Then another person comes, and you gotta do it all over. That's that cycle, over and over and over, developing that player.
I've looked over thousands and thousands, maybe tens of thousands of accounts. It's a lifetime loss. There's a number right in the corner that has the amount of money that the player lost. How can you recover from an accumulated nest egg or accumulated wealth that you saved for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and you lost it in a month, two months, a year? How do you rebound from that? Let me just play another dollar. There are a lot of reasons why expanding gambling at Newport Grand isn't the best thing for Newport. Now, maybe I'll just touch on two because I'm sure that many of the people you've talked to have covered other of the aspects. Most important thing to me is that it's not the way the state should be raising money. You know, when you've got a paradigm where your friends and your neighbors have to lose their homes and their savings so that government can fund things, that's not the way we should be doing business. Uh, there are better ways of doing that. Rhode Island needs to make a lot of economic development in its future, and investing in gambling is not the way we should be doing, about, doing that. Now, relying on gambling for 10% of our revenue, uh, just a bet. it's a bad bet. You hear that from a lot of people. There are other opportunities for the North End, other economic development opportunities. And instead of looking to people to lose things in order to build, we should just be building new things for this, for this city, building new jobs, things that our kids can go to college to come home to do for us. The other thing I talk about is we don't need it. We are already a place that people want to come to. Newport's a special place. I'm not a Newporter, can't claim it, wasn't born here. 30 years doesn't really make me a Newporter. But I could have left Newport a long time ago and I didn't because I've learned to love Newport for what it is. And we don't need a casino to make it any better. A casino is gonna make it less. So it's easy for me to oppose this issue because it's not what's gonna make us better and it's not the way we should be raising money to invest in ourselves in the future.
so grand and Newport grand now hopes to expand. They want table games and a convention hall, a spa entertainment and a boutique mall. It sounds so grand, but Newport beware. Things aren't what they seem, something's foul in the air. Our state politicians are hungry for cash. They invest our taxes and things that will crash. Gambling brings crime and embezzlement. We're left with addicts whose money's been spent. If you fall into debt, the owners don't care. They make their profits off of people's despair. We had a local vote, but it's been taken away by late night dealings that smack of foul play. They promise us jobs, but their motive is clear. Just follow the money, their words aren't sincere. It's time to end this Monte Carlo show. For the love of Newport, just say no. For years we fought to vote gambling down. It has no place in our historic town. The time has come again to take a stand. No expanded gambling at Newport Grand. So fellow Newporters, let's get out the word. Vote on question one and make your voice be heard. It's time to end this Monte Carlo show. For the love of Newport, just vote no. It's time to end this Monte Carlo show. For the love of Newport, just vote no. It's time to end this Monte Carlo show. For the love of Newport, just vote.